One of my children it was who triggered this conversation. He had asked me why people get fired. Since I had no interest or very little interest in ammunition, I told him separation was an easier word. And that sometimes people separate because they weren't living up to their contracts. And sometimes they may have tried to make the relationship work and it just didn't work. Sometimes they may have found other opportunities and want out. I try to explain that whatever the circumstance is, it is rarely ever a conversation people like, but it's part of real life. An ardent reader of Reader's Digest, the jokes were my favorite page. Sorry, I know it should be something more intellectual, but the jokes, I really love a good laugh. Anyhow, there was a story of a man who jumped on his boss's table to curse him out. A startled boss was wondering what was going on when his secretary ran in to say, Mr. John, Mr. John, your wife just called screaming. She says to let you know that the lottery number is wrong. Now, whether you have won the lottery or not, as an employer or an employee, the separation process must be professional and empathetic. As an employee, if you're going to have a separation conversation, please write your lines to take. I'm not saying memorize them, but it should cover your rationale, which you should have discussed with your legal team prior. Be fair and pay relevant conversations as due and understand that there is no perfect way to separate. But empathy and authenticity can help you get through the discussion successfully look people aren't blind just because um, you're separating they can see you a friend once told me a story of someone who was having a separation conversation and then she burst into tears seemingly on her behalf she said it took every willpower she had not to (laughs) slap the face of the person who was crying for a woeful performance. I saw a notice once, actually during this whole pandemic. It read, Please be gentle with my team, for it is their last day of work as we are closing down our business due to the pandemic. If you do know of any organization who is hiring, please let me know. I thought that was a very authentic and heartwarming message. I've read somewhere that the news of a job loss is like losing an arm. The emotions are strong and you've got to be aware of this. From an employer employee perspective, there's no need to jump on the table. The decorative depiction of the world that most people have in their offices, in their homes, it shows that the world is round, which means it comes round. So there's no need to burn bridges, for the bridges may reconnect someday. If you have an an opportunity for an exit interview, please speak up, speak up professionally, speak up about what you think would have been done better in the organization. If you put down a grievance during the exit interview, you should speak about how perhaps the incident made you feel, the overall impact on the organization. Look guys, don't overestimate your importance, even if you're the one who's writing the code for the organization. Institutions have been set up to be stronger than individuals. They may miss your person, miss your skill, but only for a bit because they'll move on shortly after. Don't ask me how to repay a bad manager. I think that you're, because you're separating should be enough to gift. He or she would no longer have any impact on you, which I think is a much higher gift. A friend describes it as a reflection after your first crush when you're growing up. Almost like, you know, you're reflecting as an adult and you're thinking, how is this relevant in the real world of today? Now, I've got two final messages. One is, I've always believed that because you didn't do well in company A, doesn't mean you wouldn't do well in company B. Whether voluntary separation or otherwise, you'd be fine in the end. If you aren't, then it is in the end. And hey, I'm enclosing best wishes for all your tomorrows. Cheers.